Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for healing. Hallelujah. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you, Father, for freedom. Thank you, Father, for victory, Father. Thank you, Lord, because we are glad that you are in our lives. We are so glad that you came to save us, God. We're glad, God, in the name of Jesus, from the earth to the cross, Father, from the cross to the grave, Father. We thank you right now from the grave to the sky, Lord. We thank you right now. Hallelujah. Your purpose. Oh, to redeem us, reconcile us, restore us, heal us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God is good. Amen. God is good. Man, everybody being stretched, I guess. Hallelujah. So we call it. I think we just called according to God's purpose. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. We called according to God's purpose. And that is the, the theme of the thought, the essence of faith. Where is your faith at in God? Hallelujah. So I'm going to try to do better today. <laughs> By the Holy Ghost. I love you too. It's all good. It's all good. But sometimes, something, in order to put the story together, I'm going to have to do some of the old and some of the new, or some of the new and some of the old. So that you get a great essence of what we're talking about. In Hebrews chapter 11, hallelujah, God is good to all of us. Uh, essence of your faith, essence of my faith. We already know that our faith is built on nothing less. In Jesus Christ and his yeah. who's helping me? His righteousness. I know that's one of those old songs. So we're gonna be adding a few hymnals to our music because we have to, you know, um, go into the nursing home. So we have to so we are culturally diversified. We're gonna add a few hymnals. So uh, God is good. Amen. So we have faith to learn a few hymnals, faith to do the work and you know, I had to ask my auntie, well, what am I, what do you preach on? What do you teach on? You got to bring it down a little bit. Okay, so we're going to do that inside of the nursing home. But today in here, I'm going to have to help you out. All right. But, <laughs> I love the church. You know, but I also love something else that is so important, so vital. It's to see in a moment, in a twinkling of eye, the last few months as the ladies have been having babies and people being sick and all that, we got to watch the praise team go through transition and do all these kind of different things and people. But isn't it nice to know, see, the answer, nothing can be done without teamwork. All right. And so it takes teamwork. It takes so much teamwork. And, and because here's the thing, the other side of teamwork and faith, is trust mm -hmm. that when somebody asks you for help, they can trust you're gonna help them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and everything. They don't have to know all your abilities, but they just know they have help. Mm -hmm. And so then we'll pray the prayer, Lord, send me help from the sanctuary, you know, and He'll send us the help. Mm -hmm. It's just not dressed like we want it, but all it's right, still man. His sanctuary, it's still His, uh, it, it's from His point of view of, of help. Okay, and whatever that help may be. And so watching this morning, watching all the guys up here at the bar came in, I thought that was just a little bit funny. You know, <laughs> because usually it's the other way around. And yet in the moment, I wonder if we really catch the essence of what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you lock yourself in and say, well, I can't help him, I can't sing, God is not asking whether you can sing. He's asking, will you help? help. Mm -hmm. help. Yeah. Send us help. Yeah. That's what he's asking for. He not, he doesn't to, because he already got you covered. Your notes don't have to be perfect because you're required to make a joyful noise. And when you're called on to help support, the guys are, and the girls are good enough in there that the music can do its part and God will give us harmony in our own self. But he's, he, hallelujah, because we're called according to his purpose in that moment, in that time, and he sends us help. The essence of your faith is knowing that God is faithful and he will help you in all things. Yeah. All things. Oh, okay. And all things apply to also when we need help. Help. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is good. Now, you know, I, I can't beat the drums or play the drums, but my little, my right foot, it'll help keep the beat on the right of the bass. It can't do that. That I do know everything else is out of sync. But you know, <laughs> y'all missed it. <laughs> but that's what it's about. Hell. So where's the answer? Do you have enough faith that when somebody asks you for help, they need your help? regardless of whether you, and I like what Pastor Will did, right? He said, yeah, I'm going to have to do this part in here my way. But the team, and he, they would have did a quick boom 
help in that corner to help him get a tune for it. And, and the, the musicians knew where to put their keys and all those. Mm -hmm. I, at least I heard that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. They knew where to play in and everything because they had an instance too that they were really not sure on that song, but he had enough of it. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we jump in and we're the supporting cast now. How do we do we have enough faith to jump in from where we're at? I positionally positionally to jump in and say, we're gonna help you guys. Mm -hmm. Teamwork. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing how you can have a hundred thousand people in a stadium help the eleven players that's on the field if mm -hmm. it's their team? Mm -hmm. And all those people that the stadium are doing up there in the art in the stand is just mm -hmm. screaming. Mm -hmm. And they know if they make enough noise, they can disrupt an offense or a defense. Mm -hmm. Now that's hell. Mm -hmm. And so the players on the field realize that when you see them do, they're doing this right. What are they doing? They're asking for help. help. And what do the people do? Help. Drunk and all. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Drunk, high, whatever, they help it. Sober, they help it, right? So in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, God is so good. Because First of all, it, it, it has to start. Look at, look at verse 20 in chapter 11. It says, by faith, Isaac did something. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. Now, this is where, you know, we as preachers have to understand the audience and everything. So I'm going to try to do a lot of different things that to help us in different areas. You can watch when it happens so that you'll know and you'll understand. You know, I don't like that word, dumb it down. You know, I don't like that. But it kept flashing through my mind. Because we have to hear, hear, hear. Right? So, in essence, I already know that, as Pastor Jenner alluded to in here, we're mature. Mm -hmm. We read our word. We have an understanding. So, just historically, from a historical perspective, okay, because it was already asked, are there any visitors? So, there's no visitors today. Right? So, to help us grow and to be mature in some other areas, in Hebrews ch chapter 11, uh, verse 20 says, by faith, it says, Isaac, what does Isaac's name mean? Everybody say laughter. Yeah. All right, so he just having a good old time. <laughs> but he did something. He blessed who? Jacob. And who? And Jacob and, and Esau were brothers, right? Mm -hmm. Now, he, we know historically that, that Jacob could not, or that Isaac could not bestow the same blessing on Jacob as he bestowed upon Esau, correct? So we know that those blessings were established differently because of the circumstances and the situation and in the time and all the deception that went on with uh, Rebecca. That was Isaac's wife, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so with that being said, you, you, you have this family, you have deception, but you have this father over it all whose name still means laughter. And God has a way of bringing joy out of sadness through deception. It may take some years, but it will happen. Okay? And so from looking at that from a lineage perspective, we have Isaac blessing Jacob, Isaac blessing Esau, concerning things to come. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's something that we want to come. And it's the substance of things that are not yet See, so here is faith. Isaac blessed them in a way that is going to touch their future. Would you agree with that? So he has, that's his position in all of this through no matter what goes on. And we know that the brothers were at odds with each other eventually because of circumstances in life and what happened and, and one not having faith, one being hungry enough, one deceiving. I mean, all these different things. So we have so many things that go on in our lives. Mm -hmm. But it does not have to altered the blessing that was prayed over our are y'all here mm -hmm. where is your faith in God you may not understand all of it your season may not have come time may not have happened for you yet but will you live through all the diverse situations that come up in your life first of all it has to begin with the father right mm -hmm. so Isaac does his part and I you know I forgot about Abraham but I, because without Abraham there is no Isaac Without Sarah, there is no Isaac. But here we are. Now we have them in their places. But it's Isaac praying a blessing over his children. And then after that, it's Jacob taking up the mantle to continue things to go on in their lives, right? To carry forth his part of the blessing. Everybody say Jacob's part of the blessing. Jacob's part of the blessing. Okay. So for, in Jacob's aspect, so by faith, verse 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, Bless both the sons of who? Joseph. And 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 did he did something. He worshiped. Leaning on 
upon the, the staff, right? So here now you see Jacob doing his part. He blesses the sons of Joseph. Well, who is Joseph? Joseph is the son, obviously, of Jacob and Rachel, correct? And God, he is this favorite son who has to go through what? Turmoil, conflict, misunderstanding, anointing on his life. Everybody say called according to God's purpose. He was called according to God's purpose. Are y'all here? Yeah. And so by him being called according to God's purpose, you see now we got lineage, right? We got Isaac, we got Jacob. We know Esau is the brother, but Jacob is the father of Joseph. We, we, we all agree with that? And then Joseph, he does, uh, Jacob blesses the sons, Ephraim and Manassas, right? Okay, y'all still there with me? Yeah. Am I doing all right? It's on you. I told Pat I would have been to do it like he does. So he does it so well. So you know, I I, t I learn from everyone. We're never too old to learn. Man, you know? right. So right. now you have his son, Joseph's sons. They have been they've been blessed. All right. Now while they are blessed, it's still Joseph. And we're gonna land on Joseph. But I had to give you this family tree inside of here to <laughs> understand. That here is, where is the essence of your faith? Mm -hmm. The essence of what Joseph's faith was in is in not only in God, but in what he's been taught by his forefathers. Mm -hmm. What he's been taught, hallelujah, from those around him. And yet God has given him skills and gifts that he is not even aware of. Mm -hmm. And then, but when called upon, he gets to see the essence of his faith in God at work in him. Mm -hmm. Are you here? He gets to see it in action. So he, re he watches this thing, this blessing going on, and, and yet Joseph is still required of his father to fulfill the request. Mm -hmm. And so you look at that, and so it says this, verse 22, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel, okay, and gave commandment concerning his bones. Now, for somebody that doesn't even know the word of God, that means nothing to them. But since we have a house of people in here that know the word of God, right? To you, that should mean something. The essence of faith. Here is Joseph. Let me give you a little caveat. Joseph is 120 years old. Okay? Everybody say long life. Long, long life. life. Now, here he is. Let's take him to his boyhood, his childhood. He's a favorite son of his father, who is Jacob. His mother is Rachel. Correct? Mm -hmm. And with that being said, he gets this robe of many colors mm -hmm. that is given to him. He didn't ask for it. He's called according to God's purpose. Mm -hmm. He's called according to God's purpose. In God's purpose, everybody say suffering. Suffering. You don't have to ask for it. He just shows up. You're called according to God's purpose. Mm -hmm. But in his suffering, his faith in God, the essence of his faith is still intact. Would you agree with that? So let's paint this picture of here's Joseph. He's a child. He, he sent down to look on his brothers to check on those brothers of his. The brothers have this jealousy against Joseph because they see the favor on him. It's not Joseph's fault. Mm -hmm. It's just what's in Joseph just keeps coming out of him. Mm -hmm. What does that say to you today? What's inside of you concerning the essence of your faith toward God? It should just keep, really just keep coming out of you. And he, that essence of your faith and your belief in God sometimes will cause you to suffer. Mm -hmm. It will lead you to a place of suffering and you haven't done anything. Sure. Are you here? Amen. But your faith in God should still be in what? Intact. Mm -hmm. And what you know should still be intact. You should not waver from the faith that you have in God, regardless. Yeah, he, here's Joseph. He's blessed. He's blessed with this coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. However, his brothers only see it as favoritism. Mm -hmm. And so therefore they scheme to throw him into a pit. First they want to kill him. Mm -hmm. But somebody even inside of their guilty conscience, even a person with a guilty conscience can do the right thing. Mm -hmm. They may not do it to 100% effective, but guilty save, uses Reuben to save his brother's life. Mm -hmm. That's guilt. So let's just sell him off. So what does he do? He gets sold into Egypt. Would you agree with that? In essence, then, that leads us back to our verse that says, and he gave commandment concerning his bones. He gave a commandment. So with that, let's go over to Genesis chapter 50. Is God all right? Is faith used in prayer? Yes or no? Is faith used in salvation? Yes or no? You see all of it, right? It's all right there. How good is God? So in chapter 50, are you in chapter 50? Does faith help restore relationships? Does faith help heal wounds? Does faith bring about deliverance? Does faith impact your confidence? Hallelujah. How powerful is faith? It is so powerful that the acronym for each letter is, you know, forsaking all I take him. You know, F, forsaking a O I I T T H P M. Mm -hmm. Take the Lord, no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. And so here is Joseph. Joseph has lived his life. But what got him to that place? To say, remember me, remember my bone. Here's commandment. As a little child, he sold into bondage. Are you here? Potiphar picks him up on the backside. He's accused of committing something that he had nothing to do. Mm -hmm. But the favor got him. People looked upon him, saw that he, he had, Potiphar looked on him and said, he, he got the favor of God. He's making my house be blessed. Mm -hmm. So he understands that. And isn't it amazing that he wasn't even jealous or envious of Joseph? Mm -hmm. But he, he used the skills of Joseph to make his house prosperous mm -hmm. without being jealous, mm -hmm. without being envious, without finding fault in Joseph. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. What does that speak about our Christianity and our faith? When we see God has gifted somebody and has used it for his glory and his honor, we should be able to say, hey, come on, step right in here because you're beneficial. You can help you right. work. All and right. there is no jealousy, no envy, none of those things. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that require something of us to say, Lord, I need to fix some things inside of here, inside of me, mm -hmm. that with God I see somebody being used and say this morning with all the different gifts. I'm not jealous. I'm not envious. Hey, look at God. Yeah. Yeah. Because they had to step out of their zone, quote unquote. They had to take courage, quote unquote. You being on the drums last week, right? It took courage, but yet help. Mm -hmm. mm. How good is God? Amen. Yeah. He's helped. All right? And yet there's a gift of the ministry of help. Oh, we didn't have it. Do we have it? No, we don't have it right there. But if you go on down, it talks about helps. Help is so important. Where is your faith? What is the essence of what you believe in? Do you believe in God for the totality of working in you completely? With the anointing, it's not only the anointing, but when others see the favor, can they come to you and say, hey, would you help me? How awesome is that? Potiphar, help me. And then when things arise and, and there are no control and they seem to be out of control, but then we fall into that place sometimes of being people pleasers mm -hmm. as opposed to being a God pleaser. Mm -hmm. and so here's, 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 here's Potiphar, here, here's his wife, here's Joseph. He's, Joseph is accused of having, you know, committed, having a sexual act with her, but he did nothing, but he did the right thing. And sometimes just doing the right thing, you will suffer for. Mm -hmm. Happy are you, according to the scripture, if you suffer for righteousness sake. Mm -hmm. But what right reward now. is there if you do evil? Yes. There is no reward mm -hmm. from that perspective. Man, I, I, you want to be rewarded for doing evil? You want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And in doing the right thing, right, you suffer for it. Mm -hmm. In Joseph's case, his part of his wife lied. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. To have somebody lie on you and then you get thrown into prison for it. Mm -hmm. But he maintained his integrity. Mm -hmm. Listen to that. What does that speak? I don't want my wife lying for me. I don't, and I'm not going to lie for her. And I'm not going to take up for her if she's wrong. If you're wrong, wife, you're wrong. If you're wrong, husband, you're wrong. Where is the essence of your faith? 
pine, he took up for his wife, knew it because he was willing to please the people mm. and that blessing that was blessing his house. He moves it out. Mm -hmm. How, look at that. Are y'all here? Yes. He moved the blessing out of the house and put it in prison. But even in prison, the essence of faith, even in a place where you feel in bondage, you've got to learn how to operate in faith, believing God that, you know, the old song is, he may not go to say, he may not come when you want it, but he's always on time. Some people just say it because it sounds good, but some of us have just lived it out, mm -hmm. right? Because you know that the time of God is always perfect. Mm -hmm. And faith says, because faith is the substance of things hoped for. I want this to change. It may not change today. It may not change next year, but I have enough faith in God that eventually it will change. But one thing God is requiring of me is that I stay faithful to him. I stay true to him. Hallelujah. I feel obedient to him. I live this thing. I, I walk it out by faith and not by what I see. I may not see the reaction I want to see. I might not get the response that I want to get. I be, hello. But faith says be steadfast. I'm always abounding in whose work? In the work of the Lord. Not on the circumstance, not on the situation. The work of the Lord. Joseph's gift was to make things prosper, put them in order, and fulfill and help a man get his whole household in order. He did his son. But he gets thrown in prison based on a lie because a man rather listen to his wife than to listen to. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. I don't mean that. In, I, listen to his wife in the natural, mm -hmm. not the spirit. Okay, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Good clarification? Mm -hmm. Right, because if both are surrendering to God, then we're both moving by the spirit. All right. But if we're not, Abraham got deceived by that, did he not? Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you, you look at Joseph in prison now, he's had to spend all this time in prison. But remember, he goes into Egypt as a teenager. Mm -hmm. He's in prison as a young man for umpteen over 20 plus years. It's, it's crazy. But he still got faith in who? And his gift and his talents made room for him. Where at? In prison. Doesn't the scripture tell him that a man, when a man's ways please the Lord, he'll even make his enemies be at peace with him? Yes. And so the, 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 the story of the, the uh, controller of the prison, he was at peace with Joseph, and he therefore put Joseph in charge of things in the prison because he saw how things aligned themselves even in prison. Are you here? So even if you think your situation is tough, and it doesn't change. It looks like it's, it's prison. It's a prison time. And it's weighted down on you and nothing. Else. Will the gift of God still work in you flourishing? And will you still have the essence of your faith in God to know that God is going to turn this thing around? Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. And even when I ask for help, because remember in the prison, he has to interpret two dreams. Mm -hmm. One for good, one for bad. Yeah. And both came to pass. Right? But the butler was restored into the king to his position, right? And Joseph made a request that, remember me. Mm -hmm. When you stand before Pharaoh. But he forgot Joseph. Mm -hmm. And so yet Joseph, it didn't change, it didn't change Joseph from being the godly man that he was. Joseph still was prayerful, still sought God, still worked in his gift and in his talents. Mm. He didn't let his surrounding or those that put him there, he didn't let none of those things change him. Mm. When will we get to that place where we don't let those things? You can cry, you can be hurt, you can be wounded, you can be scarred, you can be knocked down, you can be cased in, but you don't have to let your faith be diminished in God based upon the surroundings yeah, or the surroundings. Yeah. And, and it's definitely not based on how many people agree with you. All right. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the scripture tells you to agree with your adversary quickly. Mm -hmm. Why? If you agree with him quickly with your adversary, you have an understanding where he's at. You can see his position. And now you walk in wisdom and have to skillfully work around him mm -hmm. and save your life. Yes. Are we here? Yes. Oh, man, how good is God? Where is your faith? Yeah. What is the essence of your faith? Does it believe all things? That it, you know, mm -hmm. I felt a little bit of love. Come on. <laughs> you know, well, you have to have this kind of love for God in order to really believe it. Yes. But it's a learned thing, and yet he was trained in all of that. Mm -hmm. So he learned it well. And yet we're trained. All of us are being trained. The children are being trained. Where is the essence of your faith? Mm -hmm. And now he's about to get out of prison. Because God does something so miraculously. 
Everybody say, God is at work. God is at work. God was working all along. We can't even see it. And he's yet working all along. Joseph, help me, Holy Ghost. Because here's Joseph now. The God bless a dream and shows what he's about to do in Egypt. But he's already put Joseph in place, in position. He's already structured things in Joseph. Mm -hmm. Not externally. It hadn't happened out there yet. Mm -hmm. But he structured things inside of who? Joseph. Joseph. Internally. Hallelujah. And certain people have had an opportunity. The people in prison, they benefited by Joseph being there. Mm -hmm. Hello. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. Amen. Somebody will benefit by you being hurt, wounded, scarred. Hello. Being hurt. Beat up and all those kind of things, disappointed on it. But they see something in you that your faith is in God, and no matter what, you got this right. You press toward the mark mm -hmm. of the prize. You refuse to stop. Mm -hmm. Are you here? Because you're locked into who God and your God. faith is in God. Uh huh. And so since that happened, here comes you know here comes Joseph out of prison with Pharaoh's dream. Mm -hmm. He interprets his dream. Everybody say promotion doesn't come from the north, the south, the east, or the west. Where does it come? Promotion comes from who? God. Right, because it doesn't come from the north. It doesn't come from the south. It doesn't come from the, it comes from the Lord. It may spread you north. It may spread you east. It may spread you west. It may spread you south, but it's still coming from God. Yeah. And when it gets in here, God goes, whoo. And now he gives Joseph the ability to interpret it. But where would Joseph have been if Joseph would have just sat in that prison and would just whined and cried and lived in disappointment, lived in darkness? If Joseph would have just been bitter and he just been, oh, well, where, where would he have been when called upon? Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have been no good to anybody. He'd have just been cast back into the prison from which God delivered him out of. And yet the psalmist said that the Lord delivered me out of a horrible pit and set my feet upon a solid rock and he established my going. Yeah. He had it all in purpose. He made it yeah. available to him. So yeah. he kept himself in a place in his mind while in darkness. Mm -hmm. So here's what we all have in common. We've all been children of darkness. Mm -hmm. But now we in the light. Yeah. So we're supposed to walk as children in the light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here he is now. He gets an opportunity to walk in a place where he never thought that he would have been. He gets to be able to be a provisionary person of someone he never thought that he'd have been. His dream, his vision, it wasn't about being over in Egypt and being the, high, the governor in Egypt. It wasn't any of that. But he, God, he, God called him. He, God saved him. Are you here? Everybody say duality of salvation. Duality of salvation. God saves him, right? He's a saved man. But God saved him out of that pit. God saved him out of the prison. And now God is saving him before the king. Because if he gets it wrong, he's a dead man. Mm -hmm. So God saves him. So I guess we go to plurality now. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of these things. Oh, you're here. Mm -hmm. All these things you got inside of you. Just because the only reason some of them haven't come out yet is because the positioning is not right yet. But do you have faith to be steadfast, to be rooted, to be grounded, be like the tree planted by the river of living water? Be the person planted by the river of living water. Right. Right? Be that. And so here he is. He can't get out of Egypt because God got him poof. Mm -hmm. And yet God is so awesome, so merciful, so gracious. He has to now become the savior of a nation that doesn't even like Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Are you here? Well, 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 well. <laughs> Love your enemies. Mm -hmm. Do good unto them that despitefully misuse you. Mm -hmm. Are you here? He's a walking essence. He's a walking billboard of all of these things. But you know what we do? What do we do? We get bitter. We get hurt. We, I'm hurt. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to do all this stuff. And you know what? I love you with all I do. And somebody have to get in my car and go cry. You know, I've been crying a lot lately for whatever reason, but it's all good anyhow. Mm -hmm. Over some of everything. Mm -hmm. A little bit yesterday, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? God is here to help us. Mm -hmm. 
And sometimes he has to correct us. And sometimes he has to come back and in that correcting, he did and break us. He tried to, he, he gives us wisdom with why. Mm -hmm. Understanding that you may live mm -hmm. because you haven't arrived at the place yet. I haven't arrived at that place yet of what God wants and how the skills and the gift. Like, we don't even know the measure of skills and talent that reside in us right now. We don't even have a clue. We know what we do on the surface. We know what we say out of our mouth. We know what we see sometimes see it being a dream. But until you're placed in a position of now it has to, it is an action, right? And all of a sudden it starts to come out of you at that moment of that time. Joseph had been prepped. He stayed in the place. He didn't de couldn't depend on his mother. He couldn't depend on his father. Are you here? In that prison, in he couldn't depend on his brothers or his sisters. But you know what he could do? He could survive for them. Mm -hmm. And he had to live many years not knowing anything mm -hmm. of where they were, what was going on. But look at God's plan. Now he's in the government. Now he's got a plan in place to call a land that is barren to survive. But survival wasn't only for those in the land. It was for those who were to come to the land. Mm -hmm. And God had this thing so well orchestrated. And sometimes if we can stop being so selfish mm -hmm. in so many ways. And say, okay, God, you've given me a plan to be able to live. Now, if there's something, if, if I don't know anything, I know this much about the Lord, and maybe we can take this away. It's not all about you. Mm -mm. God is using you to help somebody else who is coming into the picture that you don't even know. And yet some of you know people that are coming into the picture, but they don't know how to get through the struggles they're in because you're still focusing in on your struggles and you can't see the freedom that God is trying to bring to them that he's going to give to you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Amen. So here, his brothers, they committed an act, a deed. They just sold, but they lied to their father. Well, they already know something according to the law. The liars are supposed to die. Mm -hmm. That's in the law. They know that. But they can't tell their father the truth. But isn't God awesome? Here's Governor Joseph. There's famine in the land, but I hear that there's grain in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So what does God do? He orchestrates. Joseph is living over here independently. Joseph doesn't have help from his quote-unquote family. Mm -hmm. But he has help from the people in a foreign land. Those people see God has favored him, and they're following the instructions that he's given that the land may survive because, yes, gather in time of harvest mm -hmm. because famine is coming. And if we gather now, we'll be able to live through the times of famine. Are you here? Mm. You know what? Let me be spiritual while you're here. I hope I'm being spiritual all the way through. I feel like I am. Mm. You know what I mean? Because when your time, of, if you will gather all the grain you can right here, right now, while the spiritual God is feeding, when you feel like, man, I just don't feel like I'm getting nothing. I feel like I'm going through death. You know what? You got something to glean on because your body has stored up nourishment. Mm. Are you here? It, it isn't awesome how a bear can go hibernate in the winter, but they stored up all the food during the times of I mean, feasting time and mm -hmm. summer, but when winter came, and so they didn't have to think about it, they built their burrows in the ground, and they stayed in there for months, and when it was time to come out, they may have looked a little thin, but they were surely healthy, mm -hmm. and they had energy to go out and gain more. Are you here? So here's God in there. Here's Joseph in there. The brothers come into Egypt. Joseph recognizes mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, Joseph's got to deal with his own scars of yesterday. Mm -hmm. Nothing he's had to be confronted with before. And so maybe, maybe God is trying to confront you with some character defect. Confront me with some character defect. Hallelujah. By allowing certain things to happen because he wants me to change certain things in my character. Mm -hmm. But I refuse to do it. You know what I mean? Joseph refused to really change his character, but he manipulates things. Mm -hmm. Are you here? Mm -hmm. And out of that place of manipulate, you ever manipulated something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> some of you still try to manipulate. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. And it, I'm telling you, it will not work. It's going to cause you more pain, disappointment, confusion, yeah. and hurt. Yeah. All right? Yeah, yeah it's going to hurt the other person, but it's going to cost you more. more. Yes, yes. So it has to be corrected. You have to fix it. And God is so awesome, right? Joseph does the little thing. He, he, he said, go out to break the bread. They stole something. Bro, stole a little copper. You know, bring it back. 
But he's also blessing them to have more than what they need. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't God awesome? So see, we get these things mixed up. God is correcting us even when he's blessing you. Mm -hmm. Are you here? Amen. Yeah, I'm blessed. You know, but some people, we have a bad perception. Mm -hmm. We, we, we want to overlook our faults when God is correcting us. Mm -hmm. And say, well, I'm still blessed of the Lord. You are. But he's going to bring down. That's coming a day when it will confront you face to face. Mm -hmm. Amen. Joseph totally broken, right? Heart is broken. And he has to eventually reveal to his brother that he's Joseph. Mm -hmm. And his brothers, they live back in fear because now they start remember what we did to them. Mm -hmm. They remember all the bad. They remember how they lied. Mm -hmm. Joseph requests, I mean, it just, you know, here, how do we get everybody into Egypt? Get my father down here. Get Benjamin down here. Yeah. They all wind up in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now they all have this confrontation. And yet, Joseph, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, said he gave commandments. Mm -hmm. Concerning his father, mm -hmm. where is the essence of your faith? Mm -hmm. So he, what, 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 what the Lord just do for all of us? He just walked you through this young man's life mm -hmm. in Hebrews, where he told you how Jacob blesses the, uh, Joseph's two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. But look at that; doesn't mean anything to you. But if you understand now how Joseph got him into Egypt by God's plan. Mm -hmm. It put Jacob in a possession, a position to be able to do just that. Bless his grandson. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that awesome? Amen. Yeah. We don't have time to deal with all of us. We have to go back and read on your own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the essence of it, where is the essence of your faith? Joseph had to have it in active. He may not have understood it all. Look at somebody and say, I don't have to understand everything. I don't have to understand everything. Yes, I understand the scriptures and all that. Get it, get and understand it. But while you're getting, you don't understand. You're trying to obtain it. It has not yet come. Is that correct? Man. But the essence of your faith says, I'm still intact. I'm still moving forward. You know what? Because God is not going to take me out of this place. So how do I become beneficial? How do I help? We just want the church to grow, right? Let's look at that as being Egypt. What skills do you have? What gifts? What talents? What abilities? What favor? Are you using all of those attributes? God is good, isn't he? Where's the essence of your faith? Or do you become bitter? Are you angry? Are you disappointed? Living that way, acting it out. That has an effect. Look at God. Mm -hmm. But here, Joseph said, in essence, when you leave Egypt, do not leave me here. Do not leave my bones here. How good is that? Mm -hmm. And we know they were in bondage for 400 years. And as I said, Joseph lives to be 120, right? Okay, now Genesis 50. Y'all, I ain't got to read a little bit. I know I don't told you the whole story, but it's just good to my mind. <laughs> Hot off the press, Pastor Daniel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at verse 15. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, this is after his father, he died, Jacob, their security blanket. All right, look at the name I might lose my security blanket. <laughs> this is not that. Let's do it. Joseph and his brethren, okay? All right, y'all with me? And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will, per, will peradventure hate us. And will certainly require us all the evil which we did unto him. Mm. Remember, I told you earlier, there'll come the day when you got to be confronted with what you've done. Mm -hmm. And you might write the story only in your own mind. Mm -hmm. And the other person, they don't even have it in their mind. Mm -hmm. Because, see, he, he was already reprimanded by his father. Mm -hmm. But God had already reprimanded Joseph for his acts, mm -hmm. he'd already broken him. All right? So now we can write many stories of what we think when our security blanket is left. And how somebody's going to treat me now? That's a bad position to live in mm -hmm. and have in your mind. Mm -hmm. And think just because. Is that amazing? And yet here's God. And they say, 
Our father is dead. Mm -hmm. Joseph will hate us now. Wouldn't you think that after all he's done for them, mm -hmm. they would have known by now? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 After all we'd have seen people, mm -hmm. when something comes up, we'll go back, no, oh, they don't like me. Mm -hmm. No. Because if I go on deeper into chapter Hebrews 11, step it on into some of that, there's a correction that takes place. Mm -hmm. Is God all right? Amen. All of this. Amen. Look at this. They think he's going to do a meal. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph. My <laughs> daddy told us to say, <laughs> Forgive. I pray thee now the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. Mm. For they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespasses of the servants of the God of thy hope. Mm. That just touches where he believes in the essence of his faith through all his life has been he believes in God, and the brothers want to use that God relationship mm. now for their good because their perception in their life, mm. even though they've been told everything was okay, they're still living in that plane. Yeah. And some of you, oh, Mm. Are still living in a place when God is already you free. Just have, if God has to say, "Hey, you know, you need to stop there," mm -hmm. you say, "Thank you, God." Mm -hmm. If He needs to repeat, you say, "Thank you, God," yes. because it's all for your good. But they live in this place and yet sing all that God is doing, mm -hmm. and God, God has applied for their families, mm -hmm. and now God has taken their skill and gave them the best land. But no matter sometimes what God does for us, we don't picture. We don't. We start writing pictures. We stay locked in our own mind. And yet we're told to be transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of our mind. And it's a constant theme. And when the Holy Spirit is talking to us, we need to stop saying, but Holy Spirit. <laughs> we need to stop our own thinking. Shut our own mind down. Mm -hmm. Have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Mm -hmm. What is the Holy Spirit saying? And I mean what he's saying is much more powerful than what we're thinking. However, we de we minimize its power and we quench it and shut it off and our minds take over. And our mind is an enmity. Mm -hmm. It's an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. It conflicts with God's purpose, mm -hmm. with God's plan. Our mind does that. And thus we have what? Conflict. Mm -hmm. Are we here? Amen. God is good, huh? Now watch this. They got it right, the script, forgive. We pray thee, forgive. Forgive what? Our trespasses. We shouldn't have sold you into Egypt. We shouldn't have deceived you. We shouldn't have lied to our father. Isn't that amazing? We shouldn't have broke his heart. Let me tell you something here. When you start lying, and you want to cover just you, and it's all about you, you will go to whatever stream is necessary. Mm -hmm. And you will hurt somebody totally innocent. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what their relationship is to you, because you're only concerned about preserving you. Mm -hmm. Those 11 brothers mm -hmm. were concerned about who preserving who? Themselves. Themselves. And they did it more than once. Mm -hmm. And isn't it amazing that even Judah participated? Mm -hmm. And we want to go praise. <laughs> even in your praise. Mm -hmm. You can praise for a good feeling. But if you don't praise to change your heart, you're going to show up again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel the Holy Ghost. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's the conviction. Yeah. That's not the condemnation. That's convicted because he convicts us of our what? Sins. But he's faithful just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. So true to his word. And so what does Joseph do here? Let's see how this plays out. And it says, and his brethren also went and fell down before his face in verse 18. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. Isn't that amazing? They were trying to place themselves in a place of servanthood. Mm -hmm. And yet he's been serving them all this time. Mm -hmm. 
Now, why didn't you think about being a servant prior to that thing? Why wait till a circumstance arise that it causes you now to be full, to, in your own mind, you're forced into a place of humility? That's not true humility. That's position. That's circumstantial. Are you here? So you'll live through a circumstance of me, but it'll lose its effect. Mm -hmm. yeah, I hope this is good to y'all. Yeah. Hope this is helping. Mm -hmm. And so, and Joseph said unto them, verse 19, what did Joseph say? Look at that. First words out of his mouth. Fear not. Everybody say release. Release. When you hear somebody say, hey, fear not. Don't worry about it. It's so good. You ought to be saying, man, I thank God for what? My release, my freedom. Mm -hmm. They're telling you again, it's okay. It's not, it's all right. So they say, fear not, right? Mm -hmm. For I am in the what? Everybody say place of God. So Joseph realizes his position now. Where is the essence of your faith? Where is it? You know, if your if your faith is correct, you understand your position. You understand the why. I didn't say you had to agree with it. You know what I mean? Because Joseph had his moments too. Are you here? Stop lying to yourself and your emotions. Right. My goodness. God, I pray don't take my emotions. No, he's not going to do that. Because if he takes your emotions away, then that means he has to remove his emotions. Yeah. Because God has emotions. Mm -hmm. God has emotions. And he gave you the oh. essence of his emotions. Uh, he can just control his much better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. But when he wanted to destroy Israel and Moses talked to him, he controlled his emotion and he repented. Mm -hmm. Or he would have gone, you know. Yeah. When are we gonna control our emotions? We can do that mm -hmm. by the help of God through the Holy Ghost. Amen. Are you here? Yeah. And so Joseph says, I'm in the place of God. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm in the place of God, he says, But as for you. Here's the truth. Mm -hmm. You thought evil against me. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's an honest confrontation. Mm -hmm. Where is the essence of your faith? Some of us don't like people co coming back at us and telling us where we're wrong at. But we'll treat others wrong and do all kind of crazy stuff. But yes, when God, God comes back to reprimand us for doing it, we'll get mm -hmm. upset. my goodness. Mm -hmm. What you sow, you're going to read. Amen. That's just a, I, that's a work. Amen. It's part of it. But it helps you. Yes, sir. It helps. Yeah. We all learn from it. Are we good? Yes. And so, Joseph, you thought that. You thought it. Now, don't think he got it the first time up. <laughs> don't think he got it when he was in the pit. <laughs> don't think he got it when he was, you know, uh, coming out of prison and into the palace. Because he shows up again in himself. Yeah. He didn't have it when he first saw them. Yeah. He's working on everybody say progress. 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 Okay. So he he help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. So you look at all of this and hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> God meant it unto good mm -hmm. to bring to pass as it is what? This, this day. day to save who? Much people, many people, whatever your interpretation, it was to save a multitude of people. But he used Joseph, who had to go through suffering. Yeah. And he had to suffer. It didn't just apply to Israel. It applied to Gentiles, nations. He used them. What's inside of you? What's inside? Where is your faith? What's the essence of it? How is it working? Is it working? Do you have the faith that, man, if I get look like I'm thrown in the pit, dungeon, but doing what's right, do you have the faith to still continue to minister? Do you have the faith that still could be the example? If you have to walk alone for a moment, you know, that's how I feel like. Just so some of you don't think I have emotions. <laughs> Can you still push? Because down the road, look at this in the interim, right? 
Joseph is doing all these things. People are working, right? Employed. Things are going on. People are growing. His family, they're being blessed. And God didn't even forget about them. Right? And so Joseph says, now for verse 20, uh, 21, now therefore fear ye not. I will nourish you. Mm -hmm. Those people that perceive him to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Your little ones. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I'm not only going to take care of you. We're going to take care of your children. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Right? And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Knowing how they treated, how they thought, what was going on in their mind. Mm -hmm. He knew it. And all the time, how many times God stopped, has, has tried to stop you from living in fear? Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you don't have the wounds of a scar, but he's trying Man. to stop you from living that way. So if you will accept the instructions of the Lord, mm -hmm. look at that. God is good. Yeah. And so watch this, verse 22 through 26. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived a hundred, oh, I said 20, 110 years. Mm -hmm. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation, and the children also of Machar, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. From Isaac yeah. through Rachel. Or Rebecca, and here comes Jacob and Esau. Both are blessed. Mm -hmm. Different blessings. Mm -hmm. And then Jacob has the 12 and the 11, I should say 10, because Benjamin was innocent. <laughs> you know, he didn't know what was going on because he was a baby. But they throw him in a dungeon, cell. He's Shifted off in slavery. But now he's in a house that his gifts are prospering. He's not having the woes as me and all of that kind of stuff. Even though he's probably human, he probably thinks back every now and then. But that's traumatic. He's a young man. Mm -hmm. But when he was a child, he should have acted like one. But now that he's a full man, he got to act like a man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet he's grown up. He's mature now. And he can talk to his brother. Yeah, you made it far. He was a little harm. But God, I'm in his place. How many of you have grown to the place where you can tell somebody, I'm in the place of God mm -hmm. in my life? I'm not talking about the building. Mm -hmm. I'm in the place of God in my life. And while I'm in this place of God in my life, I'm still growing. I'm still maturing because my faith is intact in God. What relationships that were wrong with me in my life, in my relationship with God, I had to go back, correct that, and put myself in the right position with God. And what was one of Joseph's corrective measures? He had to forgive his brothers. Mm -hmm. Then he had to be able to give them a word and say, don't live in fear. Mm -hmm. Don't live like that. Yeah, I understand exactly what you did. I understood how you were walking. But God meant this for good. Man. And I just happened to be the object of the wrong. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Come on. Mm -hmm. We got children to raise. Come on. Mm -hmm. There's other people that need help. Come on. Mm -hmm. Are you here? Can you see all of this? Can you see God? You're still alive, aren't you? You ain't been good all your life. I ain't been good, but you're still here, right? You've had some problems that go on in your body, but did God give you a miracle? Yes, he did. Did God hear your pray, a prayer? Yes, he did. Are you here? Is everybody in agreement with you? Heck no. Liz and I don't agree all the time. I had to use her today because... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean but when it all comes down to it it's all God it's all God Amen. and if I do the right thing positionally with God though Liz may not understand everything every decision that is made guess what who gonna benefit it? are you here so here but she has to see an essence of my faith in God she has to see a walk with God. Yes. Because she's developing her own. Who's developing faith in God by watching what you do, how you act, how you respond? 
My goodness. So that you can say, hey, it's okay. I knew you had the wrong motive. I knew you had the wrong intent at that moment in time. It's all good. You know what? But I'm in the place of God. Amen. And God put me here in this place to be able to handle how you act. It's all right. I like that. Thank you, God. <laughs> So you need to see somebody gonna love you even if you pout, even if you got even if you got if there's like yeah, it doesn't matter because that person is saying it's God. Amen. Joseph had an essence of God that his eleven brothers didn't have, and yet there's innocence. Benjamin, what's going on? I don't know. You know, it's like people in the church. What's going on? I don't know. Why are they acting like that? I don't know. So there are people like that in the church too. They don't know what's happening, and yet you got the other one that's creating all the stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's all. But we do that in our life daily. Mm -hmm. That's part of life. But you learn. Where's your faith? Mm -hmm. Right. And so that when you finally get the revelation that it's all God, and I accept it right here, right now, mm -hmm. I can respond like Joseph. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, he wasn't full of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> He was just taught what was right. But he had a relationship mm -hmm. with a Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. And he had a peace with God. Because he's seen the favor of God work in his life. And it had a profound effect on others. Because he saw favor with every time he would ask Pharaoh for something, he'd give it to him. And if I'm asking for my family, give it to him. <laughs> And yet the family can receive the blessing and still live in fear and doubt. Because they're too emotional. Mm -hmm. Then he says, I'm going to fall security. My father is dead. I'm living right there. No. Come on. Come on. Here, I'm going to tell you. I'll give you a I'll just share this with you. My father died at a young age. And I've seen other people I know around. Seem like that I thought they weren't living too long. So I'm like, man, this happened to the men. So I must go die. I'm probably going to die at a young age. I used to, I would think that before I got saved. I thought about that. So I thought, man, when I get the same age as my father was when he died, then I'm probably going to die. I would think that. Guess what? I didn't die. <laughs> and I'm still living. I'm 60 now. Thank you, Doc. I have no problem with that. I want the three scores and ten. Right. Move on. Yeah. But you would think that, and you can live in a place. Mm -hmm. But when salvation comes in, freedom happens, mm -hmm. and you don't live there. The Lord don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Let me close. Finish this out with you. I hope y'all learn something today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, Joseph get to see all these things happen. He get to see him on his knees, and remember Jacob blessed him. Remember. Mm -hmm. Watch this. And Joseph, in verse, verse 24, and Joseph said unto his brother, I die. <coughs> He's 110 now. He says, I die. And God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham. Amen. That's why I didn't have to touch Abraham at the beginning. Because mm -hmm. it was coming back. Because Abraham is their father. Is that awesome? Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at God. See, and not only that, he says to them, you know, <laughs> he swear to Abraham. And who's that next person? Isaac. And who's that next person? Isaac. They were personal with Jacob, weren't they? Yeah. Look at that. So that whole relationship. And Joseph is saying, hey, God, go visit you. Mm-hmm. You got here because you were hungry. When I bring you out, you're going to be full. Amen. And you will lack nothing. Amen. But here's my request. Just one little simple request. <laughs> Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, verse 25, and ye shall carry up my bone arm out of the soul. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's his request. Don't leave me in Egypt. <laughs> I've done my work. I finished the course. Mm -hmm. I kept the faith. My purpose is done. Mm -hmm. My transition is over in this place. But now the responsibility 
It's on you. You've had examples set before you. You know what to do. You know how to do it. Look at God. Look at God. God is good. Amen. He does all things well. He puts everything in our face. We don't know the essence, the totality. We haven't got close to turning over the gifts that reside inside of us. And some of those gifts can only be manifested as you walk this thing out by faith. It can only be manifested as you live it by faith. And along the way, suffering is going to come. Misunderstandings are going to happen. But restoration will surely come. And the only word that can be spoken to you right now is don't be afraid. Come on. Stop fearing. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you, Mr. Paul. You take away something today, you take away this question. What's the essence of my faith? Mm-hmm. Where it is? What is it? Because you look at this. Joseph, God didn't leave him as a long ranger in a foreign land. He blessed him with a family. Gave him children. All of these things. But what he had to do also was he had to give him a family. He had to bring the 12. The whole, he had to bring the whole herd in. <laughs> Are you here? Mm-hmm. See, some of us want to keep living out there in the desert, but we want the essence of the blessings of God. Mm-hmm. It's time to stop living out there and bring it and come on in. So you get the totality of the blessing. And the totality of the blessing, God begins to move even greater in your life. And why he's moving greater in your life? There has to come a day when total confrontation has to happen. Mm-hmm. Because it's the only way you're going to become free and totally free. And it's the only way that you will not be entangled again with those yokes of bondage. Are you here? Amen. God knows what he's doing. Amen. So what is Joseph? And he uses a man, you know. Joseph has to speak to them brothers and say, don't live like that. You don't have to tell me what your father did. You don't have to come up with some reason why I should treat you right. I'm just going to treat you right regardless. Mm-hmm. You don't have to come up with all You don't have to try to put me guilt on me to treat you right. It's just who I am. Mm-hmm. Remember, that's just who he is. Because mm-hmm. God is still requiring of you to do what? Better. Mm-hmm. Me do what? Better. So, when God brings you out of your place, don't forget me. Don't get my bold in bondage. <laughs> is that what he's saying? Take me out. Take me out. Bury me in the promised land that God gave because here's what he knows. He knows that Abraham knew. He knows that uh, Isaac and he knows that Jacob got buried in the right place. Isn't that amazing? And he said, wait a minute. Don't leave me. I don't. But he didn't even know who was going to take on the responsibility. He didn't know how long it was going to be. Mm-hmm. We know historically, <coughs> but over 400 years, but when God delivered Israel mm-hmm. out of Egypt, and they took their bondage, mm-hmm. it's a request. Mm-hmm. And he didn't ask for much. Mm-hmm. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. He didn't ask for much. But he served God. Mm-hmm. Today, the question is, do all of us set in here? Come out of the desert, live in Egypt, quote unquote, learn how to survive and be blessed. Amen? Amen. And know this, see the provisions of God. But if you continue to live on the outside, you won't see the totality of the blessings of the Lord. The challenge to you is to me. Fix whatever is broken. Take ownership of where you're at. Don't blame nobody else. Corrective actions require faith. Faith in, faith in God. Is that all right? Amen. So let's stand and let's pray. Where is the essence of your faith? Pastor, I know you have the baby, but would you get the baby to Pastor Bonner or Dave? Would you just come and pray? Is this all right, church? Amen. Amen. It is. How many of you have faith in the Lord? Amen. Amen. How many of you know that God is a healer? Amen. And all this, why are we closing and moving this way? Because 
when Joseph was about to die, all he did was talking to his brothers, and he just said, remember me. And then lay hands on him. None of those things. He gave in. And let's try to be active to do something. He said, take it off your feet. Make it personal. I don't know how you're going to do it. Hallelujah, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Father God, that you give us instructions, Lord. That, Father God, that you remind us through the Holy Spirit what your instructions are, Lord. Father, help us never to forget, Lord, Father God, the instructions that you are giving us day by day, Lord, Father God. That, Father, just as Joseph made his request known, Lord, Father God, that we would make our request known as well, Lord, Father God. And, Father, that you keep our hearts right and our minds focused on you, Father God, fixed on you, Lord. Yes. Help us, Father God, to walk, Father God, yes. in the dark world, oh, Father God, yes. being the light yes. to those that cannot yes. see and do not know who you are, Father God. Yes. Father God, help us to glow for them, Lord, Father God, for you, Lord, Father God, for your glory, Lord, Father God, that they would be led to you, Lord, Father God. Father, we do, we ask this today, Father God, for, for forgiveness, Lord, Father God, for not doing what we have been called to do, Father God. To continue, Father God, to work in us and through, through us, Lord, Father God. Father, forgive us, Lord. Father, help us to be that vessel that's willing to be poured out, Lord, Father God, into the people that are dry and, and yes, wanting a yes, drink, yes. Lord, Father God. Help us, Father God, to be so full of you, Lord, Father God, yes. that we will honor your request, Lord, that you, Father God, would, that we would be able to be the vessel you have called us to be, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for the word, Lord, Father God. And I pray, Father God, that each one of us have gotten a nugget out of it, Lord, Father God, that we would take take this, these scriptures home and read them, Lord, Father God, and dwell on them throughout the week, Father God. Just like a, a piece of um, mint in our mouth, Father God, but that we would savor it, Father God. We want to say thank you, Lord, for that taste that you have given us this day, Lord, Father God. We praise you, and Father, we ask you, Father God, as we leave this building, Father God, and go out into, into the highways, Father God, that you would protect us going home, Lord, Father God. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for the word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody through the essence of your faith. The essence of your faith. It's intact. It's intact. Because it's in God. It's in God. I now realize where I'm at. Where I'm at. Why I'm here. Why I'm here. In the place, in the place of God. Oh God. Amen. Yeah. Oh.